Hello friends, we're Muse Fanfiction. Welcome to our channel. In today's video, we'll explore an exciting video on what if Naruto had the bacteria bloodline. If you enjoy these kinds of stories, don't forget to show us some love by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Your support means the world to us. Now, let's dive into the story. Three-year-old Uzumaki Naruto lived alone, in a small apartment allotted to him by the Hokage. He had no neighbors. They had long since moved away ever since the day he moved in. That day also brought about the sudden moving of the people in surrounding buildings. No one wanted to live near the demon child who had the strange and deadly ability to control diseases. Yes, Uzumaki Naruto the vessel for the nine-tailed fox demon, Kayubi, had a bloodline, and one that no one had ever heard of before. It was new, but deadly. It wasn't always this way though, before he had lived somewhere else. Ever since he was a baby he had lived in a special room in the hospital. Basically he was a bubble boy. He couldn't come into direct contact with anyone, since the people he touched would suddenly develop a sudden fever or flu. He was handled with the best of care, like an atom bomb waiting to go off. Not all things were bad though. He got visitors who would teach him things from books and models. These books although very entertaining for Naruto, weren't your everyday children books, no they were medical books. The doctors and scientists the Hokage had hired to tutor the blonde were very surprised by how fast the boy had devoured the books and were soon showing him higher level books. Many hailed the boy as a prodigy in the fields of virology and bacteriology. These people would then plead with the Hokage to let them take the blonde under their tutelage, as an apprentice. The Hokage although pleased by the blonde's progress, had to deny their requests stating that the boy had already chosen what he wanted to be when he grew up. When asked, he told them that Naruto wanted to be a ninja. Although little disappointed they immediately went back to teaching the blonde anything and everything they could before their time with the blonde was cut short. After these lessons Naruto would have other lessons involving his bloodline. He would have to practice infecting animals with different diseases and regulate the amount he infected the animal with. This way he could easily infect a person with a disease and regulate the amount he put in them without killing them. After successfully learning this he moved on to taking a disease out of an already infected animal. Once the Hokage deemed Naruto able enough to control his bloodline he got him an apartment to live in, and that is where our story starts. It was a beautiful night in Konoha, the stars were out, people were sleeping in their warm beds, ninja were out doing their patrols, and in one apartment three-year-old Uzumaki Naruto stood looking down at a man dying of epidemic typhus disease. After the man stopped moving the blonde-haired boy picked up his fallen stuffed bunny. He held it to his chest and climbed back into bed, ignoring the body laying on his bedroom floor. Somebody will come pick it up in the morning. They always did. The next morning Naruto woke up to find two men in contamination suits lifting the dead assassin into a body bag. The two looked at him and waved. Good morning Yama-san and Yobi-san. He greeted in return. He knew these two. They were the ones who came by every morning to get rid of the highly contaminated bodies of the people who tried to assassinate him. One of the men chuckled. So what did you hit this one with? Naruto smiled and happily replied. Epidemic typhus. The two laughed. Well that's a new one. Well we better go dispose of this. We'll see you after Naruto. The blonde nodded. Bye the two men left with their burden. Naruto happily skipped into his kitchen and made himself breakfast, today he was going to try and make a friend. He tried before but all the parents had quickly grabbed their children and ran away. It wasn't his fault he had a deadly bloodline, he was the only one to have such a power, not even the Sandame heard of a clan who wielded the power to command bacteria. So he was the first of his kind, unfortunately the council didn't see fit to grant him the title of clan head but that was alright. He didn't need or want to sit on a council full of boring old men. The only thing he wanted was to have a friend and maybe one day to have a family. So he went out to once again try to find a friend killing any assassins he came across in the process and ignoring the villagers who backed away from him holding cloths to their mouths. Silly people don't they realize he could easily use the bacteria already in their bodies to kill them? Of course not they were stupid. He had a happy smile on his face as he walked down the streets giving certain rude people sudden colds, or fevers, he even gave on man a bad case of the runs. Giggling, he walked into the park and looked around at the children playing. Already though he could see the parents spotting him and calling for their children. He spotted one child who didn't have any parents calling out to him. 
It was a boy with long braided hair and wearing a dark blue Chinese style outfit. He grinned and walked up to the boy who was swinging slowly on a swing looking longingly out at the other children playing. Naruto had almost made it to the other boy when a panicked adult grabbed the boy from the swing and held the startled child in her arms. Naruto frowned. Get away from him you monster, she hissed. Naruto pouted. I only want to play he took a step towards her. Stay away I won't have you killing an innocent child with your demonic powers. The boy struggled in her grip. Let me go. You're hurting me. Indeed she was. She was digging her pointy nails into his ribs. Naruto scowled. Let him go. You're hurting him. She shook her head and began to back away. Naruto caught the other boy's panicked and pain-filled gaze. No way was that woman going to take away a new friend. So he concentrated on giving her a sudden flu. The woman stopped suddenly and bent over releasing the boy who ran away from her and towards Naruto. The woman threw up, making the bystanders grimace and look away. By then the dark-haired youth was already smiling and talking with Naruto. Hey thanks for saving me from that crazy lady, what did you do to her? He asked curiously. The blonde grinned. I have the power to control bacteria which causes diseases. The other boy's eyes widened. Wow, that's so cool, hey you want to play? Naruto nodded. Sure, I'm Uzumaki Naruto by the way. The other boy grinned. Rock Lee the two then proceeded to play ignoring the crowd of people who were helping the woman up and taking her to the hospital or the others who warned their children to stay away from the two, before taking them home, leaving the two happy children playing in the empty park. Moving bacteria and bullies the next day after playing all day with his new friend found Naruto sitting in his kitchen sipping tea ignoring the two twitching men laying on the floor. He shook his head. Didn't people realize that trying to kill him was useless? His house was full of highly contagious bacteria. Why in his bathroom he put cholera, and in his bedroom he still had epidemic typhus. The kitchen and living room had malaria. He chuckled and turned to his tea partner. Do you like the tea, Ebola-chan? The bunny just sat there. Naruto nodded as if the bunny had said anything. Yes you're right it is a little bitter, but what can you do the assassins knocked our honey all over the floor with their twitching. He stood up. I'm going to see if Lee is at the park yet. He looked stopped and concentrated, he held up his hand commanding all the diseases he had collected over the years to come to him. Soon a noxious cloud started forming around his hand. He smiled at the ball and grabbed his bunny. Okay my little friends, you are going to have to stay in Ebola-chan while I'm gone. If anyone other than Yama-san, Yobi-san, the Hokage comes in kill them okay? The ball shivered and seeped into the stuffed toy. The bunny gave a jerk before surprisingly standing on its two feet and giving a small salute. Naruto smiled and gave one back before leaving. The bunny left alone looked down at the two men and wobbled towards them. It poked one before putting its hands to its mouth and making a giggling motion. It sat there all day poking the dead men. Meanwhile Naruto had made it to the park and looked around. There by the swing was his friend. He started when he noticed three children go up to his friend and push him causing him to fall of the swing and hit the ground. Naruto growled and ran towards the group. Lee was sitting on the swing waiting for his new friend Naruto to come by. He liked him he didn't make fun of his appearance or the fact that he was an orphan. Suddenly he found himself on the ground nursing a new bump on the back of his head. He looked up to see who pushed him, it was three older kids. They sneered at him. Well, look what we have here. It's the freak lover, Lee is confused. Who was he talking about? What? He asked. One of the bullies laughed. You don't know. That kid you were playing with yesterday is a freak. No one likes him, and anyone who hangs out with him is equally a freak. The one in the front cracked his knuckles. So we're going to teach you a lesson on making friends with the wrong sort. Lee flinched and closed his eyes as the boy lashed out at him, but nothing happened. There was no pain. He opened his eyes and gasped at what he saw. The three bullies were laying on the ground moaning in pain, and Naruto was standing above with an angry look in his eyes. Don't hurt my friend, he snarled. The bullies trembled and nodded before crawling away their faces flushed from a sudden fever. Their concerned parents quickly snatched them up, gave Naruto a glare and quickly made their way home. Naruto ignored them in favor of helping his friend up. Are you okay? They didn't hurt you did they? He asked concerned. Lee shook his head. Not really Naruto nodded. 
So you want to play? Lee smiled and nodded. They then went to play on the suddenly empty playground. They didn't notice the person watching them from inside a tree. Killer parties, ninja academy, and an Iwa Nin. When Naruto returned home that night, he was met with three men in the living room, and another laying just under his windowsill. He sweat dropped. When were they going to stop? Shaking his head, he called out. Ebola Chan. A soft squeak sounded as the diseased ridden bunny looked into the living room to see Naruto standing there. It jumped and clapped its fuzzy paws together before running up to the blonde with its arms wide open. With each step, a cute little squeak sounded. Naruto laughed and bent down to pick up his stuffed bunny. Hey there, Ebola Chan. Did you have fun today? The bunny nodded and nuzzled into Naruto's neck. The blonde wrapped his arms around the bunny and went to inspect the dead bodies. The two dead men were obviously Chunin and the one by the window was a random Genin. He giggled and went into his room to sleep. An hour later he got his first assassin, although he didn't realize this. Ebola Chan took care of it though. The bunny sat up the whole night killing anyone who trespassed into its master's room. The next morning Naruto awoke to find four men laying on the floor. He looked at them and giggled. So someone really wants him dead huh? He dressed and went into the kitchen for breakfast, ignoring the other man who was laying under the living room window. A swirl of leaves later and the two men Yama-san and Yobi-san came in to do their daily jobs. They looked around at all the bodies. Yobi-san chuckled. Well Naruto did you have a killer of a party here last night? Giggling Naruto nodded. Yes, although I think the guests got too drunk and fell asleep where they stood. Someone should take them home don't you think? Yama-san and Yobi-san saluted. Right away sir. Yama and Yobi human shuttle service at your command. Picking up people after killer parties is our job. Naruto laughed and clapped. The containment suited men then proceeded to take their cargo to the special labs down below the Konoha hospital. Naruto went back to making breakfast. He was halfway through his cereal when there was a knock on the door. Who is it? He called. Naruto you wouldn't want to leave an old man like me standing outside in the cold do you? Naruto grinned and hopped to the door. He opened it and gave the person standing there a hug. Old man. He yelled happily. Mentally he called all diseases away from the kitchen and living room. Come in. He said while pulling the elder man into the apartment. After sitting the man on a chair he continued his breakfast. Well it seems that you have plenty of visitors Naruto. Remarked the Hokage as he looked around at the dead men covering the floor. Naruto nodded. Yup, I'm really popular, the Hokage chuckled. So what brings you here old man? Naruto asked as he wiped his face and pushed the now empty bowl away. Well I came to invite you to the ninja academy. Naruto perked up. Of course I understand if you don't want to go, after all he was cut off when Naruto jumped on him. No I want to go to the ninja academy. If you don't let me I'll sick Ebola Chan on you. He declared brandishing the evil bunny who clapped. Sandame sweat dropped. You still have that thing? He asked. Ebola Chan jerked and tried clawing at his face but didn't get too far with Naruto holding it. No Ebola Chan you can't kill him. Naruto admonished shaking the bunny a bit. The Hokage leaned away. Naruto turned to him and said. And you shouldn't tease him. One of these days I won't be here to stop him and where will you be? The Hokage opened his mouth but Naruto cut him off. I'll tell you where, you'll be six feet underground. Why I doubt there will be an open casket funeral after Ebola Chan is done with you. The blonde shouted into the air. Looking exasperated. Ebola Chan and the Hokage looked at each other and shrugged. After the older man successfully calmed down the boy he left his Naruto's application in hand. Naruto meanwhile went to find Lee and even brought Ebola Chan with him. Why? Well the bunny wouldn't let him leave without it. Now Naruto was sitting on the swings waiting for Lee to arrive. Once again just like the day before the park was empty. It was just him there now. He swung slowly keeping an eye out for his friend. He waited and waited. Finally half an hour passed. Naruto was about to leave when he saw the dark haired boy running up. Naruto smiled and waved. The other waved and stopped before him panting heavily. When he caught his breath he said. Sorry about that Naruto, I was stopped by a mob of people, who didn't want me to come anywhere near you. So I threatened them. Naruto quirked an eyebrow. How? Lee grinned and sat on a swing beside Naruto's. 
I told them that you wouldn't be very happy with them if they didn't let me pass and that you'd probably do to them what you did to that woman the other day. They backed away after that but some were insistent that I don't come see you. I don't know why, he shrugged. Naruto frowned. Why would a mob of people try to stop Lee? He looked around. The streets were completely empty. There was no one around. He stood up off the swing. Something was wrong. His ears twitched when he heard a bird take flight from the trees. Lee the other boy looked at Naruto. Hmm? Naruto gulped and said. Get behind me. Lee frowned. Naruto? Naruto shook his head and said. Lee trust me get behind me. Lee gulped at the sudden seriousness in Naruto's tone, so he did what the blonde asked. He looked around fear starting to creep up his spine. Naruto what's going on? Naruto didn't answer. Instead he kept his eyes on the shadow which was moving towards them from the tree line. Well I see that you figured it out brat, stated a man wearing a headband from Iwa. Naruto tensed and held Ebola-chan tighter. Who are you and why are you here? Naruto asked. The man laughed. I am Kodai Junin of Iwa and I am here to kill you. He said taking out a sword. Naruto cursed. I know about your abilities and I can tell you right now they won't work on me. The man stated taking out a breathing mask and fastening it over his nose and mouth. Naruto nearly let out the chuckle when he saw the mask. Idiot he was already dead. Lee whatever you do stay behind me and don't look. Lee nodded fearfully and closed his eyes. Naruto smirked at the older man, so you really think you're safe do you? Don't you know anything of my bloodline? The Iwa Nin looked confused. His employers already told him everything. Naruto blonde chuckled darkly and let his stuffed bunny rabbit fall to the ground where it amazingly caught its balance and stood straight up. Although a little unnerved the Junin had to laugh. Are you out of your mind brat? What's a stuffed bunny going to do to me? Cute me to death? He laughed again. Naruto got a smug look. Nope Ebola Chan is going to kill you. The Junin snorted at the name the brat gave his bunny. You don't scare me with your delay tactics, he growled. Naruto laughed. Well you should be afraid Iwa Nin, cause Ebola Chan doesn't take kindly to those who try to harm me, or make fun of him. He added at the end. He then said, Go ahead and kill him Ebola Chan the bunny saluted and took several squeaky steps forward. The Junin laughed and disappeared, reappearing just in front of the bunny and then raised his foot and brought it down on the stuffed toy. Ebola Chan was pinned. Ha, huh, see, you and your bunny don't stand a chance. Naruto grinned. Actually it's you who doesn't stand a chance, look down. He said pointing to the mon's foot. The Junin looked down to see a noxious black cloud begin rising up out of the toy. He jumped back only to have the cloud follow him, he jumped away. The cloud dispersed. He laughed, is that all you got? He asked mockingly before suddenly coughing under his mask. Naruto smirked. The Junin coughed again this time choking on air. What he stammered. Naruto walked towards him looking impassive. Well you see before you came out of the forest I had already released a virus in your area. I then waited for you to start bragging like so many did before you while I let the virus seep into your airways. I waited for you to let your guard down, and had Ebola Chan release some more bacteria into your skin when you stepped on him, and now you are going to know how it feels to die of pneumonia, and Ebola. He told the now coughing man. The Junin tried to stand but the combined viruses had already started to cause his body to weaken. With his last breath he gargled. You monster Naruto just smirked and turned back to his friend who was still closing his eyes. Is it okay to open my eyes? He asked. Naruto picked up Ebola Chan and grabbed his friend's wrist. Not yet he then led his friend away from the grisly scene. He took Lee out to eat and told him that it was just another assassin trying to kill him. Lee was horrified but calmed down after Naruto assured him that it didn't bother him and that he was perfectly safe because of his bloodline. Lee was still afraid for his friend but let it pass. That night Naruto went to bed with a grin on his face after he remembered that he was going to the academy next month. School and the Uchiha the month waiting for school to start passed quite quickly. Naruto spent most of his time playing with Lee at the park they now called their own, since no one went there anymore. Something that Naruto is quite glad for, he didn't need people sneering at him just for playing. He also introduced Ebola Chan to Lee after the boy asked about the creepy moving bunny. That remark got him an angry Ebola Chan who proceeded to run after him trying to claw at his legs. 
Naruto found it hilarious. Oftentimes the two would be found either at the park or at Naruto's apartment studying ahead of time. Lee was already a student but he wished to help his younger friend, because when he first went to the academy he was slightly behind the other students who were part of a clan or had parents. He was more often than not the object of his classmates' ridicule. Lee did not wish this on his only friend so he offered to help Naruto study. These study sessions were enjoyable for both boys. When the day finally arrived Naruto was a bundle of nerves, he didn't know what to expect. Lee had managed to calm him down a bit by saying that they only do orientation on first day and telling the students the curriculum for their first school year. After that they gradually start off easy and then moving on to higher levels. This made Naruto glad. At the very least he won't be too behind. After a hearty breakfast Naruto met Lee down at the park and then proceeded to the school for first day. When they got there the school was already full of people. Children made loud noises as they went about finding their friends and talking about how great ninja they were going to be when they grew, and parents were talking amongst themselves about how proud they were that their children were going to be ninja. Naruto and Lee were immediately avoided when they were spotted, there was a whole two meters distance between them and the crowd. Naruto looked around as parents pulled their children away, he scoffed. Idiots, if he wanted they could be dead before they could say, long live the Hokage. Ignoring them for now he looked around and spotted a large group of people wearing white coats. He grinned and grabbed Lee's hand. Hey Lee there's my friends. Lee looked at the group. E.H., those are your friends? Naruto nodded and led the other boy to the waiting group. Dr. Hayashi. Naruto called out the white-haired scientist with round glasses. The man looked around before spotting the blonde, he immediately grinned and waved. Naruto it's been a while he said as the boy came up to him. The blonde smiled and looked at the assembled group. Wow, it's weird seeing all of you outside and not in the labs back at the hospital. Why are you here? A dark-haired woman smiled. Naruto we are here to see your first day at the academy. We wouldn't miss it for the world, now would we? She said. The group nodded. A young man with dark purple hair started sobbing. Oh Naruto why couldn't you have chosen to be a scientist? You would have been great. Now you're off to be a ninja, with no hope of having any more time to explore a world of science. He grabbed the boy in a hug. Please reconsider, I'll do anything. I'll lick your shoes, let you experiment on me, please. He begged. The other scientists and doctors sweat dropped. Poor Dr. Kaiba, he wouldn't know, composure, if it hit him in the face. They had all agreed the day before that they wouldn't try to persuade Naruto to reconsider coming back to the labs. Now here was Dr. Kaiba blubbering like an idiot. They collectively sighed. Kaiba was a great scientist but his emotions got the better of him sometimes. They theorized that there was a hormone imbalance in his system. Lee meanwhile was staring at the group. How did Naruto even meet these people? He poked the blonde who was trying to calm down his friend. The boy looked up. Ah, Naruto who are these people? The dark haired boy asked. Naruto's face lit up with realization. He didn't introduce Lee to his friends, he blushed. Ah, sorry Lee, hold on. He looked down at Kaiba who had wrapped his arms around Naruto's legs proclaiming that he wasn't going to let go until Naruto promised to come back. He had to do something about him first. Listen Dr. Kaiba, if I promised to come by the labs every Saturday and Sunday would you let me go? Kaiba looked up and nodded happily, he jumped to his feet and let out a cheer. Yes. Science 1 Ninja School 0. He was then promptly grabbed by Dr. Hayashi and shoved back into the group. Naruto meanwhile said, Ah, guys this is Rock Lee my friend. The group looked at the small dark haired youth. Lee fidgeted under their gaze. Naruto continued. Lee these are my friends, Dr. Hayashi, the head of the science department in Konoha the old man grinned and waved. Dr. Sayaki lead scientist in the field of virology he motioned to the woman who smiled. Dr. Coben, who specializes in the study of bacteria. The tall pale-skinned man nodded. Dr. Ishiwa, Dr. Coben's assistant. The man with long blue hair smiled and nodded. Dr. Ushi, who specializes in the study of human and bacteria interactions. The man with green hair waved. Dr. Sukamura, who studies viruses and how they infect humans. He then finished gesturing to a grinning Kaiba. And of course Dr. Kaiba, Dr. Ishiwa's assistant, 
His area of study is my bloodline the Bacon Kaiju, also known as Bacterium Release. Kaiba waved. Lee nodded looking impressed that Naruto knew so many scientists and doctors. Before any could continue a voice spoke up. Well what do we have here, a science convention? The group turned to the speaker, who turned out to be the leader of the Uchiha clan, Fugaku. Beside him stood a small boy with black hair. The man sneered at the blonde. Or perhaps you are here to collect a runaway experiment? The group glared. Dr. Hayashi stepped forwards. Well if it isn't Lord Uchiha, what brings you to the academy? Fugaku smirked and patted the boy beside him on the shoulder. It's my son's first day, it was expected of me to attend such an event. Dr. Hayashi nodded and fixed his glasses, well that's interesting. If I remember correctly you said you only had one son. Fugaku glared. That was before Sasuke was born, you senile old man. Hayashi smirked. Oh really? My mistake then. By the way did you manage to get that blood test you requested from Dr. Koji? He asked with a smile. Fugaku paled and reddened with anger at the same time. That is not any of your business doctor, he sniffed and turned to leave. Come Sasuke let's leave these fossils to themselves. The boy Sasuke nodded and hurried after his father like a small duckling. Dr. Hayashi smirked at the retreating figure, a sparkle of mirth in his eyes. Did you really have to rile him up like that Dr. Hayashi? Naruto asked when the man turned back to their group. The older man chuckled and ruffled the boy's head. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Before any of them could continue the bell rang. Ah, well it seems that it's time for you to go. Hayashi said. Naruto looked saddened. Hayashi smiled. Don't be sad, we'll be seeing each other on Saturday remember? Naruto grinned. Yeah, Hayashi nodded and said. You better be off now before you're late. The blonde smiled. Okay see you guys. The group nodded and waved as Naruto dragged his friend into the building, ready and eager to learn. School life after Naruto's first week at the academy he came to a decision. He hated it. They didn't study biology, not even a mutter of the word bacteria or science. What kind of school was this? He raised his hand to ask but the teacher was either blind or ignoring him. Well. This was a cause for, since he sat in the back with all the other students sitting away from him, his actions went unnoticed. He reached into his coat pocket and pulled out a three-inch purple elephant that he took everywhere with him. He brought it to his face and whispered. Mr. Flu I have a job for you. The elephant saluted using its trunk, making Naruto smile. The elephant then promptly turned around and hopped off Naruto's hand. It took a couple little squeaky steps and stopped. The students two rows below Naruto looked up when they heard the strange squeaking coming from above. They gaped when they saw a stuffed elephant apparently move on its own. What the hell? The elephant hopped up and down emitting a strange condensed greenish-yellow cloud that floated upwards and then towards the oblivious teacher who was facing the blackboard. One by one the students looked up when they spotted the cloud of sickly greenish-yellow floating towards the teacher. The room had gone quiet. Everyone was watching as the cloud floated just above the teacher's head. The teacher meanwhile turned when the room had suddenly gone quiet. He looked around at all the students who were looking at something. It wasn't him he was certain. The students were looking at something above him. He looked and got a face full of cloud. He yelled and waved his arms about frantically, afraid that it was a poisonous gas. He was wrong, and it was too late. The cloud had already seeped into his system. When the cloud was gone, and nothing happened the teacher assumed that it was a prank by one of the students but who? He eyed each student searching for one who would have the gall to prank a teacher while in class. It couldn't be any of the girls, their behavior didn't fit the prank. The Uchiha certainly not. He was a proud member of the Uchiha family, he wouldn't bring himself down to a commoner's level by using pranks. The Nara, Akamichi and Aburame were out. They were either too lazy, too busy eating, or too stoic to do something like that. That left the Inazuka and the Kayubi brat, he sneered. Uzumaki Naruto detention after school for playing a prank on a teacher when class is in session. The Kayubi brat had the gall to smile at him. Well, finally you notice me. I've been trying to get your attention for the last two days, and thought of the only thing that could get you to notice me. The teacher blinked and growled. Well what is it Uzumaki? Naruto dropped his smile and said. Well, I wanted to ask why there isn't any biology classes here at the academy. 
I mean biology could help future ninja recognize and treat bacterial infections and diseases while on missions if their comrades end up with gangrene or a sickness. The class turned to the teacher for the answers, he got red and hissed. Another detention for questioning the school's regime Uzumaki. Naruto smiled. Well I'm sorry you're going to miss those detentions sir. The teacher frowned. What? Naruto smirked showing pointy canines. Well you see you're going to be sick for the next two to three weeks with the flu, so you won't be around for my detentions. The teacher paled. How? Naruto gestured to the elephant. I had Mr. Flu here infect you with his namesake the flu. That cloud wasn't a prank it was retaliation for ignoring me. He informed the suddenly feverish teacher. How dare you? You lit the teacher began but stopped when he felt his breakfast start to come up. He ran from the room trying to find a toilet. Back in the class Naruto gently picked up Mr. Flu and left the room while his classmates gaped. He went home to work on something he had been making for the last three days. It was night time in Konoha, everyone was asleep safely nettled up in their beds, except for ninja doing their shifts keeping eyes and ears out for enemy ninja and keeping watch for trouble, and a small blonde haired boy about the age of three. What was a child doing up in the late hours of the night? Well, he was finishing up his masterpiece. The result of long weary hours of work, and artistic imaginations. If only he could get those annoying people to stop pounding at his door. The blonde had been holed up in his apartment for the last three days neither coming out to attend school or to play with his friend Lee. He would have, if he wasn't so busy. You see after successfully managing to implant viruses into his toys using his own chakra as a simulated host environment for the viruses to inhabit and thrive in he decided to expand on that idea. If he could get something bigger and more versatile than a stuffed toy and use it as a storage unit for his collection of viruses and bacteria and hopefully use it as a semi-alive and aware weapon it could revolutionize his bloodline attacks. It was genius. He had burst out into maniacal laughter whenever he became too excited. Which caused that insistent knocking to come to a halt for a so seconds before it started up again only more urgently. The sun had just peeked over the horizon when Naruto finished his masterpiece. Bone tired and weak from lack of nutrition the heavy eyed youth stood back and gazed at his newest creation. A slow grin appeared on his face, finally you are complete. He breathed. Standing above him at a six foot and seven inches height stood a wooden puppet figure shaped like a man. It had spiky blonde hair and dark blue eyes, it was dressed in a simple pair of black ninja pants and shirt. Over top that was a white vest with an orange spiral on the back. Naruto had made the disease-filled puppet to look how he thought his own father would look. Being an orphan and having no parents, he often longed for a family, so he decided to make his own. It had taken months to gather all the parts and how to actually figure out how to implant the viruses into the thing but it was worth it. He grinned up at the puppet. From now on you're called father. The puppet slowly nodded. Where did he get the idea for puppets as weapons? Well he had read a book on puppet masters in Suna and came up with his own variation on puppet use. His though didn't require chakra strings to make the puppet move. While others was filled with traps and poison his was filled with bacteria which he could command at will to move. Inserted into the hands and mouth area was the viruses. The stomach area was where all the different viruses like malaria and polio was stored until they could be used as attacks. Once they were finished with killing their opponent they would return to the puppet to be used again for further battles. The best thing of all was that the puppet could move even when Naruto wasn't around to command it, just like Ebola Chan the bunny. Pounding could still be heard from the door making Naruto twitch in irritation. Why were people bothering him so early in the morning? He stomped to the door and ripped it open shouting. What the hell do you want? You've been knocking for three whole days, couldn't you tell that I was busy? Once he finished screaming his frustrations out he finally got a glimpse at the person who had been knocking on his door for days. Kneeling from lack of sleep and food a silver haired Anbu flopped over as his support was ripped away from him. He groaned and muttered. Uzumaki. Hokage. Visit. Thank. Before he passed out. Naruto sweat dropped and said. Father there's someone at the door pick him up and deposit him on the couch to sleep. I have to go and see the Hokage. The puppet nodded and grabbed the man hefting him up easily and strode into the living room. Naruto rubbed his eyes and called. Ebola-chan. I'm going out are you coming? The bunny who was amusing itself by painting on a paper looked up and bounded to the blonde raising its slush arms as a silent command to be lifted. 
Naruto chuckled and grabbed it before heading out, leaving an unconscious Anbu member asleep on his couch and a puppet who stood over him as a guard. What could the Hokage want with him now? The trip to the Hokage's office went fairly well, since none dared to attack the sole bloodline user of bacteria. No it wasn't because they respected him, it was because he could easily kill them before they could say duck build platypus. So it was very pleasant for Naruto. When he got to the office he proceeded to give the sneering secretary a sudden cold and strode into the office. The guards didn't hinder his progress not wanting to suffer the blonde's wrath. They tried that before and ended up in the hospital with a bad case of the flu and strangely enough gangrene on their ahem privates. So they let him pass with nods of respect. After all what three-year-old could say that they took out a lead Anbu and not even shed a drop of blood while doing it, although a few tears were shed. Thus the respect. They shivered as the blonde passed with that most vilest of all creatures, the bunny currently nestled in the crook of the blonde's arm. It waved at them as it passed. Absolutely evil. The Hokage looked up when a smiling Naruto came walking in, with that damnable bunny in his arms. He glared at it making it flip him off, he growled. Turning to the blonde he smiled, ignoring the fuming bunny. Well Naruto I've been waiting for you to come see me for the last three days. Didn't Inu-san tell you I wished to see you? Naruto shrugged and sat down. You mean that man who stood outside my apartment knocking on my door nonstop for the last three days? Well, he's currently sleeping at the moment, he told me this morning after I finished my project. Sarutobi blinked before chuckling embarrassedly. When he had sent Inu-san to give a message to the blonde he told him that sometimes the blonde didn't answer his door and that he was to keep knocking until the blonde opened the door. Of course he used his Hokage voice so Inu-san probably thought that if he didn't do as ordered then he'd get in trouble, he sweat dropped. Oops. Well, he'll make it up to him later. He focused back onto the blonde, so you've been working on something? Mind if I ask what it is? Naruto grinned. Come with me after this and I'll show you instead. The Hokage nodded. Fair enough. Naruto sat down and asked. So what did you want to see me about? straight to business. Well you see Naruto the council is demanding that you be punished for attacking a Konoha shinobi, they are calling for your banishment. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Really, well what do you plan on doing about it? The Hokage sighed, there's nothing much I can do. For years now my power to command has been slowly dwindled by the council. I'm afraid my position isn't what it used to be, he sighed. Naruto nodded. Ah the two sat in the office wondering what way they could fix this situation. I could threaten them with a virus? The blonde suggested. The Hokage shook his head, it'll only make it worse. Naruto sighed. The best I could do is sway the council to lessen your banishment to a couple of years, as well as keep you out of the bingo book seeing as you're not a shinobi yet. I could even persuade them to let you have a guardian to watch after you. Provided by me of course. Naruto shrugged thinking of the situation. On one hand he was getting kicked out of the place he was born in but on the other hand he would be able to travel and perhaps conduct experiments he had been wanting to do for some time. They were little URM, illegal in Konoha but being outside he could be able to conduct them without having to worry about the council on his back. He grinned. Actually old man this might prove to be a good thing for me in the long run. The Hokage looked up surprise written all over his aging features. What? Naruto giggled at his funny face. Yeah don't you see this way I can travel around gathering samples for my bloodline and learn to use it to its full capacity. Oh think of all the different things I could learn. He wiped the drool from his mouth. The Hokage sputtered for a minute trying to think of an alternate way to keep Naruto here. In the end he sighed. Hi, you're right. It would be better off for you in the end. I'll speak to the council tonight and let you know in the morning. Naruto nodded getting up. So you coming? The Hokage looked up. Huh? Naruto chuckled. You did want to see my project yeah? The Hokage blinked and nodded. Yes, I almost forgot. The two left the office. Back at the apartment the masked Anbu finally woke up from his slumber. He looked around recognizing that this wasn't his apartment. Where? He sat up and looked around. Diagrams and various models were laying about. The bookshelves were full of medical books some titles even he couldn't pronounce or hope of understanding. He stretched and stood. Well time to find out where he was. He looked around examining the things on the walls and the papers strewn about. 
none of them made sense to him. They were full of mathematical calculations and large words. He rubbed his head. I must be in a scientist's home but how did I get here? I was supposed to deliver a message to the Kyubi vessel, he groaned and turned sharply when someone poked him. He let out an involuntary gasp when he saw the blonde man standing behind him. Sensei? He breathed. The other quirked its head and shook it. The Anbu blinked and finally noticed the visible signs of an obvious puppet. He mentally grumbled. Who the hell made a puppet to look like the Yandaimi? He looked around hoping to find the perpetrator the puppet followed. After searching the entire apartment he grew frustrated. Where the hell was the puppeteer? He sat down and huffed. The puppet stared at him before walking into the kitchen. He ignored it. He looked around again and blinked. What was that? He stood and walked over to the bookshelf. Something was moving behind the books. He pulled out a couple only to have whatever was hiding to hide behind some others. What? He pulled out some more until there was only three left. He grinned behind his mask and pulled the books away, only to have something green to land on his face. He screamed in shock and tried to pry the fluffy thing away. The only thing though that it didn't want to leave its new and fun perch so it clung to the man happily. The Anbu hit his leg on the coffee table and fell over. He hit the ground hard making his mask fall away with the thing still attached. The silver-haired man took one second to call himself an idiot before standing up and taking out a kanai. He looked around. Where did it go? He heard a squeak. He turned to see a small dog plushie sitting on the couch. The man blinked. He was sure there wasn't a toy there when he got up. He ignored it in favor of looking for that green thing that attacked him. In the periphery of his vision he caught a movement near the foot of the bookcase. He looked only to see a small plush monkey, he scowled. How did that get there? Suddenly he heard a music box playing. What the hell? He looked over to see a jack in the box toy in the middle of the hallway. He could feel cold sweat running down his face. What was going on here? He looked around again. Only to freeze in stock terror. He was surrounded. Everywhere he looked some manner of toys surrounded him. Small ducks quacked as they waddled forward. Baby dolls giggled as they toddled up to the silver-haired man. Large stuffed teddies lumbered on four legs, and in the background the jack in the box continued to play. The poor Anbu did the only thing anyone in his position would do. He let out a shrill scream and fell over in a dead faint. At that moment the puppet returned a tray in hand and upon it a teapot, cup, cream and sugar. It took in the scene and made a sighing motion. If it could talk it would have said, why me? But it couldn't and only did motions to signify what it thinks. The puppet quickly cleared away the other toys and set the tray on the coffee table before picking up the foaming at the mouth Anbu and setting him down on the couch for the second time that day. A few minutes later the door opened and an excited voice yelled. Father I'm home. The Hokage who was behind him blinked. Father? The blonde led him into the living room. The older man nearly had a heart attack when he saw the puppet. Yandaimi? He whispered under his breath, could it be possible that Naruto figured it out? He watched as the blonde ran up to the blonde-haired puppet and wrapped his arms around it. The puppet gave the boy a hug as well and patted the smaller boy's head. Naruto turned to the still-shocked Hokage and proudly stated, look old man, I made him myself, isn't he the greatest? The Hokage nodded, hi, he really is a masterpiece. Ah, if you don't mind why did you ma he couldn't even finish his sentence seeing as he was getting a little choked up. Naruto blinked before smiling sadly. Well, after watching all the other children with their parents I decided that I wanted one too, so I made him and called him father. He grinned. Now I have a family, and soon I'll finish mother too. He said gaining back his excitement, he gestured to the puppet. I don't know what my real parents look like so I just made his appearance up. I wanted him to look like me so I put blue eyes and blonde hair on him. I was going to go with red but I thought blonde looked better on him. I already started on mother but I'm not sure what type of hair I should put on her. Her eyes well I decided to go with green, what do you think? He asked the weary looking Hokage. To think that the child felt so alone and unloved even if he did have his friends at the Konoha hospital and his new little friend Lee. He never imagined that he would try to make himself parents. If only his real parents were alive, he managed to put these thoughts aside and smile at Naruto. I think that you should go for long red hair for mother. Naruto nodded. 
I think so to the Hokage looked for something to distract them. Ah, well it seems that my Anbu is being treated well. He chuckled. Naruto laughed and nodded. He was pounding at my door for three whole days the two laughed. Naruto looked up at the puppet. Father could you make us some tea please? The puppet nodded and went into the kitchen. The two sat down at the table beside the couch. The Hokage looked around. I see that you have some new drawings up. He pointed out. Naruto nodded. Yes, it's my ideas for making puppets that don't require chakra strings using my blood limit. I drew some basic ideas out but in the end I only made father although mother is almost completed. I hope to make a sibling sometime in the near future. He smiled eyes glazing over as he thought about his new family. The Hokage gazed at him in slight worry. He was about to open his mouth to speak when suddenly the Anbu laying on the couch suddenly sprang up and screamed before looking around wildly. Where? Where are? He muttered looking around only to spot the Hokage and a small blonde haired boy staring at him. Huh? Naruto smiled. Well you're up. Come sit have a sip of the tea father made for you. The frazzled man nodded and grabbed the tray holding his still very warm tea and sat down. Naruto smiled and said. So did you have a good nap Anbu-san? The silver haired man scratching his head a little abashed. Well strangely enough I had a nightmare. It involved me being surrounded by killer stuffed animals, he admitted with a laugh. Naruto blinked. Really? You don't say? Well then I guess I won't introduce you to my friends if you already met them in a dream. He said with a small chuckle. The Anbu froze his cup halfway to his face mask. Excuse me? He asked shakily. Seeing that the man was about to have a panic attack Naruto changed the subject. Ah, here comes father with our tea old man. The Anbu looked behind him to see the man puppet he saw in his dream come walking up. He gaped. Sensei? Naruto flickered his eyes to the puppet and to the silver-haired man in interest. Sarutobi seeing the flicker couch getting everyone's attention. Naruto could I perhaps have a look at mother? Naruto hesitated. You are M. Well she's not finished but give me a few minutes and I'll have her done. He said as he stood and ran into his workshop. The Hokage chuckled. The silver-haired man's sweat dropped. What was going on? The two men drank their tea while they waited for Naruto to finish mother. Father served them a plate of cookies while they waited. Although the Anbu wanted to ask he didn't say anything. It wasn't his place. The Hokage meanwhile was thinking while taking in the puppet father in detail. When its back was turned he could almost swear that he was looking at the Yandaimi. He pushed those sad thoughts aside and finished his tea. A minute later the unusually excited blonde came running back and proudly pronounced. Old man and Anbu-san I now present to you, mother, the Hokage and Anbu gasped as a red-haired green-eyed female puppet came walking up dressed in a simple dress and black shorts. The puppet wrapped her arms around Naruto's shoulders. Mother I want you to meet old man Hokage and Anbu-san. The puppet waved and put her hands on the boy's head ruffling the blonde locks. The Hokage didn't know what to say. Although the boy didn't know what his parents looked like he had made an almost perfect replica of them and he didn't even realize it, the Anbu was in much the same shock as he. The two did what anyone would do after seeing their loved ones in a sense come back to life, they fainted. Naruto sweat dropped. What the hell? After Naruto managed to revive the two mean and serve them another cup of tea to calm their nerves he re-explained to the Anbu about his dream to make a family. An hour later the two men left. One two have a council meeting and the other two think on some things. The next morning found Naruto being woken up by mother. She nudged him gently and motioned him to follow. Naruto blearily opened his eyes and got up making a mental note to somehow find a way for mother and father to be able to speak. Perhaps a project to work on later. In the kitchen father was sitting at the table and reading a paper. Naruto grinned happily as he saw the typical family scene he always wished for. Now he had it. He sat down as mother put a plate of pancakes in front of him and a bottle of syrup. Naruto thanked her and started eating his food slowly intent on making the this morning perfect. Mother soon sat down beside him and started working on making a scarf. After he finished eating he called for Ebola-chan. Ebola-chan I'm going to see the old man are you coming? Ebola-chan who was drawing with a green frog looked up and nodded. He waved by to his friend and ran up to Naruto. The boy picked him up and walked out. As he walked down the crowded streets of Konoha, 
Ebola Chan kept busy by killing or infecting anyone who tried to harm the Uzumaki. By the time they got the tower Ebola Chan had killed three people and infected nearly two dozen more. The boy walked past the shivering guards and waved to the Hokage. Hey, old man. The Hokage looked up from his thoughts and smiled at the grinning blonde. Good morning Naruto the boy sat down and looked at the Hokage seriously. So what's the verdict? The Hokage smiled tightly. I convinced the council to shorten your banishment, along with not putting you into the bingo book provided that you do not actively work against the village in your travels. You will be banished for eight years I'm sorry to say. You will be having a guard to watch over you, although the council thinks it's to keep a watchful eye on you to make sure you don't go astray. He paused to chuckle before continuing. You will have until sundown to leave or the Anbu will be forced to apprehend you. He sighed. I'm sorry Naruto blinked but grinned. No need to be sorry old man, it's not your fault everyone here is bigoted. The Hokage shot him a grateful grin, so who's going to be my guardian? Naruto asked curiously. The Hokage chuckled. Well when I go to my office this morning I was fully intending to look through files to find a suitable candidate, but when I go there your friend Dr. Kaiba was sitting at my door. He explained to me how he heard from Dr. Hayashi about your banishment and begged me to allow him to be your guardian. I of course agreed once he started blabbering on about letting me use him as a target practice doll and that he'd gladly eat my dirty underwear if I'd let him go with you. Naruto grimaced. Nasty. After their meeting Naruto left to go to home. He was given an envelope full of money so he needed to go shopping for some stuff. He also needed to get his parents. They would be helpful in holding the bags. When he got home he looked around a little sadly at his apartment. Sure it was a little run down, and small but this was a place he was learning to call home. He sighed. Mother, father, everyone, he stepped into the living room waiting for all his friends to assemble. Soon stuffed spiders, bats, birds, bears, wolves, tigers, bunnies, baby dolls, toads, frogs, dogs, flopping fish, toy clowns, cows, cats, and all other manner of toy poured into the room. Mother and father stood in the back, he looked at them all. Well he started. As you all know I am being banished from Konoha until I turn 11. There was a strange humming from the toys, I have until sundown to leave. Now I want everyone to help each other pack up everything and be ready to leave by 3. I have other things to do so excuse me. The toys unhappily went to do what they were told. Mother father you too will be helping me with shopping. The blonde told the two puppets. They nodded. Ebola Chan climbed up onto Naruto's shoulders like it's seen other children do to their parents. It patted the amused boy's head. Okay, Ebola Chan, you can stay there. Father, mother, come on. The blonde then left the apartment. He had shopping to do. Naruto enjoyed a lot of things in his life. He enjoyed learning and reading. He enjoyed the sun playing in his hair and playing with his friend Lee. He also hated a lot of things. He hated that people both hated and feared him. He hated not being normal like the other children at times, but worst of all he hated being an orphan. While other children would scowl and complain about having parents, he would kill to be in their shoes if only for a day or a single moment in time. So what did he do to rectify all this? He ignored the people, made a friend named Lee and made himself a pair of parents called mother and father. The blonde-haired youth held onto his parents' hands as he walked down the road grinning happily. As he neared the center of Konoha Market District, he noticed many people stopping in sudden shock, or going into an epileptic fit upon setting their eyes on the trio. Some started whispering to other, and some started fuming angrily. Through this all Naruto ignored them, he made his way into a small store. The crowd following. The owner started in surprise at first but after seeing the telltale signs of mother and father being puppets relaxed. He eyed the blonde in sudden interest and thought, so lad what can I get you today? He asked. The boy made his way up to the counter and grinned. He held out a piece of paper for the man to take. I need everything on that list if you have them sir. The man read the paper and looked back at the boy in query. What would you need all these for my boy? The blonde frowned slightly. Let's just say that I'm going on a very long trip and leave at that. The man smirked in slight amusement. This boy reminded him of a certain long-haired Uchiha prodigy he had met not too long ago. Very well I'll have everything ready to a sec. Tenton we've got a costumer. The man yelled into the back room. 
Hi. A small high-pitched voice yelled before a small girl with brown hair tied in buns came running out from the back. Her brown eyes quickly flashed to the blonde and his puppets before setting them back to her father. The man gave her the list. Her eyes widened. Wow. Why do you need all these? She asked the blonde. The boy scowled. I just did the girl tent and wrinkled her nose and huffed before running back into the back room. The man watched the two kids interact. He chuckled as his daughter huffed and stomped self-righteously into the back to grab the kid's order. You have a way with women lad. He told the slightly confused boy. Naruto just glared at the man but didn't say anything. A minute later the girl came back pushing a small trolley full of various things the boy wanted. Here you go father. The girl said as she brought the trolley before the man. He thanked her and went to count the total. Tenton meanwhile went to examine the puppets. Are they alive? She asked. Naruto eyed her shrewdly. No, not really, he replied. Tenton poked one who looked down at her. So how do they move? Puppet masters use chakra string to move their puppets but how can you do it? She asked turning to him. Naruto shook his head, they don't need chakra strings to maneuver. I rigged them to move using my bloodline. The girl's eyebrows shot up. You have a bloodline? The boy nodded. What kind? Naruto sighed. I can manipulate bacteria. The girl wrinkled her nose. Like cooties? She asked looking repulsed while backing away. Naruto blinked before bursting out in a laugh. What's so funny? Tenton demanded while blushing in embarrassment. Naruto stifled his laughter. Cooties? Are you for real? There's no such thing as cooties? It's all made up by boys who don't want to hang out with girls and girls who don't want to hang out with boys. Cooties, he snorted, the girl blushed even harder. She glared and muttered. So cooties aren't real, he shook his head. Nope a cough interrupted them before they could go further. Ah, your total comes to $175 lad. Naruto nodded and handed him the cash along with a small stroll. Can you put them in here please? The man although surprised that the boy had a ceiling scroll nodded and put everything into the scroll as asked. He handed the boy the scroll back. Naruto took it and gave it to father to hold on to. Thank you sir. Mother father let's go. He turned and headed for the door. As he was opened it the girl piped up. Hey what's your name? The blonde looked at her. Uzumaki Naruto and left his puppets trailing behind leaving a gaping duo in the shop. Naruto went to the grocery store. The crowd followed equally gaping and having heart attacks as several thoughts and realizations went through their tiny heads. The trip through the store was quick seeing as Naruto only picked out bars, empty containers, and other essentials. He left soon after paying and going to the park to look for Lee. He found the other boy sitting in the empty park sitting on a swing. He looked up when he caught sight of Naruto being followed by a large crowd. Naruto walked up to him and gestured for him to follow. A confused and wary Lee followed. The blonde led him to his apartment where all his friends were packing and stripping the apartment clean. Neither boy noticed the gaping crowd as the blonde shut his door. The two sat down at the table. Lee gaped as Naruto's toys ran about the apartment wrapping up posters and diagrams, taking out the books from the bookshelves, grabbing the laundry, and everything else. He shook his head and turned back to Naruto. Naruto what's going on? He asked sounding and feeling confused. Naruto looked at him for a moment before finally saying. I've been banished from Konoha for the next eight years. I'm leaving tonight. Lee gasped and cried. But why? Naruto replied somewhat sadly. The council has called for my banishment because I supposedly attacked a Konoha shinobi. I have until tonight to leave with a guardian of the Hokage's choice. Lee looked really upset. They sat in silence for a moment as Lee assimilated the information. Take me with you Naruto blinked. What? He asked a little surprised and hopeful. Lee looked up from the table. Take me with you, I want to come with you. Naruto hesitated. But what about school? Don't you want to be a ninja? Lee nodded. Not without you though, you are my best friend Naruto. What kind of friend would I be if I let you leave without me? Naruto swallowed thickly. Well. Lee stood. I'm coming with you and that's final, he declared a determined glint in his eye. Naruto smiled. You better get all your things then Lee. Lee nodded. I'll meet you back here in a few, he promised as he ran out of the apartment. Naruto was left smiling a feeling of warmth inside his chest.
He looked up when someone poofed into his apartment. He blinked. Anbu? He asked looking at the suddenly terrified silver-haired Anbu. Ah, Anbu-san why don't you sit? Naruto offered as he gestured to the seat Lee had vacated. The Anbu nodded and sat himself down looking around warily. He gulped when he saw a frog hop by. So Anbu what brings you here? The blonde said getting the older man's attention. The man smiled behind his mask. Well you see I heard that you were being banished so I quit the Anbu and asked the Hokage to give me some time off. Naruto blinked. Really? The silver-haired man nodded his eye going up and upside down you yep I also asked that I be allowed to accompany you. I'm sure I could be of some help. Naruto nodded looking surprised that the Anbu member quit his position and asked to come with him. Ah, oh, do you have everything? He asked. The man nodded and patted the scrolls attached to his hips. Yup. He said. Naruto nodded. The two sat there for another moment. Naruto lamented on the thought that he had two more people that wished to come with him. Lee his only friend and the Anbu who had been knocking on his door for three days. He grinned. Strange world. He looked back at the silver-haired man. You know I realized I never got your name. He said. The man blinked suddenly coming to the realization himself. Oh. My name is Hitaki Kakashi. Naruto nodded. The door flew open and Lee came running back in with a small backpack on his shoulders. He skidded to a stop when he spotted Kakashi. Ah, who are you? The boy asked in surprise. Kakashi smiled. Hitaki Kakashi, he said. Lee nodded and turned to Naruto. I got everything, he declared happily. He was excited about leaving. Naruto smiled and nodded. Great, come sit down. My friends are almost done packing. Lee nodded and sat himself down looking around at all the strange toys running around. An hour later the entire apartment was cleared of every belonging the blonde owned. The toys had also packed themselves away into ceiling scrolls. Naruto bent down and retrieved the scrolls and handed them to father who placed them inside his stomach where a small hollow area was placed. Naruto looked around before leaving Kakashi and Lee following. Naruto's eyebrow raised when he saw that the crowd was still standing at his door. He ignored them and continued walking. Lee and Kakashi looked a little curious at the crowd's behavior. Soon they reached the gate where the Hokage and Dr. Kaiba and the rest of the doctors and scientists stood. The Hokage raised an eyebrow at the addition of Lee, but didn't say anything. The group stopped in front of the Hokage. Naruto stepped forward. I suppose this is goodbye. I'll miss you old man. The Hokage chuckled and drew the unresisting youth into a hug. I'll miss you too Naruto. He let him go. Naruto looked back at the assembled crowd and then back to the Hokage. We better leave. Goodbye old man. The Hokage nodded sadly. Naruto's friends each said their goodbyes and a parting present that he had father and mother carry. The group walked away waving. In Konoha people were a mess. They were all wandering around aimlessly trying to wrap the picture of the demon Brad with two puppets who looked like an almost exact replica of the fourth Hokage and his wife, around their tiny little minds. It had nearly been an hour since the group left, some just stood there like mindless zombies. Others went to tell people of what they saw. Others were putting themselves in the hospital due to their thoughts running wild. The Hokage meanwhile was dealing with an upset council. He was sitting in his office while several members of the council gabbed around him in a buzz of high emotions and confusion. The Haruno clan head screeched. How dare that little brat make a mockery of the fourth Hokage and his beloved wife. We should have had that brat killed, another from a nameless clan shouted. We should have imprisoned it for life. The Hokage sighed and decided to tell them something he'd been keeping secret for a long time. Everyone, he started. The group slowly became silent and looked at him. Since it seems that young Naruto's actions have you all calling for his demise I feel that it's time to reveal something I've been keeping a secret. It's about his origins. The group perked up upon hearing this. Was the brat a foreigner's child? Was he an orphan of a Kumo ninja? What was the secret? What the Hokage revealed to them shocked them to their cores. Uzumaki Naruto is the son of the fourth and Uzumaki Kashina. The room was stunned silent. I thought that if Naruto's parentage was hidden he'll be safe from external harm but after seeing how his own people treat him I decided that it was time to come out with the truth. He is Namazaki Minato heir. The assembled group could feel their world come crashing around them as the information was assimilated into their brains, 
and as the dots were connected, painting a picture they weren't sure they could handle. The Haruno clan head screamed. Gia we've just banished the Hokage's son. Soon everyone was screaming and yelling causing the Hokage to sigh. We've got to get him back, the council yelled. The Hokage held up the banishment bill. I'm afraid that's not possible, the council quieted. According to this Naruto is banished for the next eight years, there is no way to undo the bill. The group mentally groaned. As of now I am making a law that everything you've heard in this room will not be uttered outside these walls in any way shape or form. The group was confused as they looked at each other. These are my rules I expect you all to follow them or else you will be charged with treason. The Hokage finished. Now if you please, I have work to do. He said dismissing them all. The group left each pondering everything they heard and learned. Somewhere else in Konoha Hayate was an average ninja. He enjoyed drinking with friends and spending time with his girlfriend. Life was normal for the young shinobi, but what he found sticking to the back of a billboard was not normal. It was a bright pink teddy bear. After checking it for traps he brought it down and looked at it. Where did it come from? Looking around he spotted another bear near a vent. He picked it up. Now what were the odds that two bears would be on top of a roof? He looked around again and went in search of any other bears. After hour of looking Hayate had discovered ten bears all colors of the rainbow. He looked at his collection of bears and wondered if someone was playing a strange game on him. He looked up when his friend Genma came hopping by. The other man looked at the bears in amusement. Well playing tea time Hayate? He asked as he took a seat nearby but not too close. Hayate frowned at him. No, I found these bears stuck all over the place. He said gesturing to the bears. Genma raised an eyebrow. Really? Hayate nodded. Suddenly an explosion occurred down the street. Genma and Hayate looked down to see that an army of colorful bears were marching down the streets exploding whenever they launched themselves at their targets, which were the villagers who were panicking and running around trying to get away from the little terrors. Hayate's eyes widened as he realized something and turned around only to find the entire collection of bears flying at him. The resulting large explosion knocked Genma into a wall. He coughed and slouched down waving away the cloud of stuff. He couldn't call it smoke since it didn't look like smoke more like floating particles. He stood up and suddenly fell over as a wave of dizziness hit him. He groaned. What the hell was that stuff? He wondered as his face heated up and he coughed. He looked up when a coughing Hayate came stumbling near. Genma. Cough or cough cough or you cough all right? The poor man was coughing so much. Yeah cough I'm all right. Genma muttered as he closed his eyes against the glare of the sun good cough I'm going cough to cough kill cough whoever cough did cough this, Hayate said as he tried to stifle his coughs. Somewhere beyond Konoha's borders a blond haired boy holding a plush bunny burst out laughing, while his companions watched in mild shock and surprise. Up in the Hokage office the Hokage sighed as another case of exploding flu bears reached his ears. Why Naruto? Why did you do it? He wailed as he sorted out the resulting paperwork from Naruto's goodbye present. Naruto yawned as he fiddled with a stick. He was currently walking outside the compound he had made in the country of Wave. He needed time to clear his head. Spending nearly 10 hours looking over books and drawing diagrams can take a lot out of a person. Naruto had changed in the last few years. He always wore a white doctor's coat that Kaiba gave him, and had kept his hair a little long, only above his shoulders. He had a pair of reading glasses perched on his nose and a seemingly permanent scowl. He sighed and muttered to himself. Relax, this is the whole reason you came out here for. He had been working on something extremely risky, it was fixing his best friend's chakra coils. A year ago they found out that Lee no matter how much he tried couldn't do jutsu. So Naruto spent the last year trying to come up with something that won't kill his friend. After convincing Kakashi to capture any missing nins, or bandits he got a good supply of experiments. Kakashi at first was reluctant, but when Naruto pointed out that they would be useful in helping Lee, and because they weren't doing anything good in their lives, they could be useful in their deaths, Kakashi reluctantly folded. He reasoned that Naruto had a good point and because he wanted Naruto to be happy, he did whatever the boy wanted as long as it was within reason. So with much experimentation Naruto began to get a general outline of how to fix Lee's coils. Of course he wasn't the legendary slug princess but he knew enough to be able to draw up a plan to help his friend. At times though he really wished he could meet with Tsunade, 
she would be extremely helpful in his plans. Naruto shook his head. Relax, he scolded himself. He frowned when he heard a small chuckle coming from behind him, turning he glared at father. Father why pray tell are you laughing at me? Six months ago Naruto managed to figure out a way for his parents to talk. It took some unlucky missing nins, some bloodshed, and a redesigning of father and mother but in the end they could talk and think just like real people. Naruto had implanted another human's brain into his creations, along as a voice casing and a pair of lungs. Kakashi and Lee weren't happy with him when they found out but eventually came around. Due to Naruto's control of bacteria all the human parts wouldn't decay and rot away, like they do with real dead tissue. Naruto had redesigned father's entire facial structure. Father now sported another's face and bone structure. It took forever for Naruto to find a perfect specimen to use but he managed in the end. Now father had an then inner casing holding the brain, and the skull taken from a missing nin, settled over top. This way if father ever was damaged, all it would take was another skull to fit over the thinner casing underneath and he'll be good as new. Kakashi had fainted when he had walked into Naruto's lab when he was fixing father's new casing over his inner one. Now Kakashi never went in there for fear of seeing something else. Kaiba had become Naruto's partner in the labs and often ran tests on whatever it was they were working on. He also was working on his own project in his own small lab. Naruto tried to get him to reveal what it was but Kaiba told him it was a surprise, so Naruto stopped pestering him. Father grinned and said, You're funny when you're thinking too hard. Naruto shook his head an amused smile on his face. Ah oh, I suppose you're right, even though I came out here to relax. Father nodded. He ruffled the boy's blonde locks and grinned. Naruto pouted. Suddenly as somebody came crashing from out of the bushes and onto the ground. Father jumped in front of his creator and pulled out a kanai. The figure didn't move. With a frown and kanai in hand father knelt down and turned the unconscious person over. Naruto hummed when he saw a red-haired teenager wearing a black coat with red clouds on it. The older boy was damaged. Naruto grinned. The boy probably wouldn't last for long, he thought when he caught sight of a large gash on the other's temple area. He could even see the white skull underneath. The blonde frowned as he thought back to his newest experiment. For three months he had been developing a new project involving live humans and an puppet body. It had stemmed from his success of mother and father. He wanted to know if he could transfer a living human brain into a stronger, faster body fully equipped with hidden weapons and special devices. He could have made a new body for Lee but the other declined saying he wanted to get by using his own strength and faults. After accepting Lee's choice Naruto went ahead and made some prototype models anyway, for just in case. He'd never know, one day Lee's body might be destroyed beyond repair and the only way to save him was to transfer his brain into a new body. Naruto liked to be prepared. Grinning Naruto turned to father. Father bring him, I have an experiment to complete. Father blinked and nodded. He hefted up the smaller one and took off after his creator, wondering what his creator had in store for the unconscious man. Three days later Naruto grinned at his latest successful experiment. He had done it. Granted it took nearly twenty no good thieves and bandits but he did it. He beheld his newest creation in triumph. The red-haired teen he and father found in the forest was surprisingly already almost a puppet. Naruto didn't know how he managed to accomplish that but it proved to be a good thing for Naruto since he didn't have to make him a new body, only a few hours remodeling it and applying seals and replacing the heart with his own creations and he was done. He only redesigned the mon's head by putting a casing in it and putting the original skull and face over it. The blonde yawned and rubbed his eyes. Kaiba looked at him in worry. Naruto perhaps you should get some rest. I can finish here and have Kakashi apply the restraining seals on the subject. Naruto looked at the other man before nodding. Hi I think I will. I'll be in my room. He said as he left. Kaiba grinned in amusement as Naruto walked into a wall. He chuckled and waved at the blonde who glared at him. Naruto was so funny. Several hours later Naruto was woken up by a frantic Lee. Naruto wke up. Kaiba says the erm subject is up. Hurry come on. Naruto groaned and sat up grabbing his jacket before running down the hall towards his lab. Lee was stopped by Kakashi from following. Ma, I don't think you want to go there Lee. Come on I'll show you hat new taijutsu book I bought. Lee pouted that he wasn't allowed into the labs but nodded anyway, 
and followed the silver-haired man in the opposite direction. Naruto swept into the room where the tied-up redhead was staring at a slightly shaking Kabi. When the man saw Naruto he frowned a bit and asked, Who are you? Naruto grinned and took the tablet from Kaiba. After reading some of the diagnostics and notes he turned to the man. Well it's usually polite to say your name first, the man stared and said. Sasori the blonde sat down on a chair and said. Of the red sand correct? The other nodded. Hum interesting, how do you feel Sasori? The redhead blinked. Fine Naruto nodded and wrote something on the papers. Do feel woozy at all? Any slight aches or pains? Sasori tried to move. Ah I wouldn't do that if I were you. You see I had a friend put seals on you so you can't move, now please answer the questions. Sasori could feel his ire stir. Release me child and I won't kill you. Naruto grinned. Ah, Sasori there's no way you could possibly kill me, since I have your life in my hands. He raised his hand and made a poking motion in the air. Sasori could feel his head throb in pain, he winced. The blonde grinned. You see Sasori, my father and I found you in the forest, and brought you here. I decided to use you in a little experiment of mine. Sasori stopped trying to get free and turned sharply to the boy. What did you do? He demanded. Grinning the boy told him. I replaced your old puppet body with a new improved version, and implanted some of my friends into your body. I also took it upon myself to protect your brain. Here he held up some pictures of the procedure that Kaiba took. Sasori eyed the pictures in disbelief and a slight bit of nervousness. The blonde took the pictures away and put them into a file. Well I do believe it's time for supper. Kaiba. The other man nodded and started undoing the bindings on the red head. Sasori eyed the blonde who was writing something down on the tablet. You never answered my question, who are you? The blonde grinned at him and said. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Sasori frowned. Once the last latch was undone Sasori sat up and tried to stand but couldn't. The boy laughed at him and turned to the man he called Kaiba. Kaiba can you get father? The man nodded and left the room. I see you can't properly use this body yet, but don't worry you will soon, but tonight I'll have father bring you to dinner and then to your room. Sasori looked at the boy in irritation. Why are you doing this? He asked. The boy took off his reading glasses and turned to him well one to see if my experiment was a success, and two so I can have a new ally, the boy chuckled. Sasori inwardly sweat dropped. Just then the door opened and a blonde haired man came walking in. The man looked to Naruto and then to Sasori. Ah, I see your experiment was a success. Naruto looked up and grinned. Hi I'm glad it was too. The blonde nodded and turned to Sasori with a grin. Hi, I'm called father, Naruto is my creator. Sasori froze upon hearing the introduction, you're a puppet? He asked in awe. The puppet nodded. Hi, my creator has gifted me with a human brain, lungs and vocal cords. I originally didn't have any of these, when he made me and mother, but now I'm almost a real human. Sasori turned to Naruto. How? He asked. Naruto grinned. Well if you accept to becoming my friend and ally then I'll tell you but first we're going to eat. The boy stood and gestured for father to pick up Sasori. The puppet did and soon followed Naruto down the halls. Sasori took this time to look around to memorize the unfamiliar surroundings. The halls were plain, painted an odd green yellow color, and the rooms he passed were mostly empty. He mentally sighed when he didn't catch anything of much interest. Soon they came upon a large room with a table in the middle. Seating at this table was a boy with long braided hair and thick eyebrows and a man wearing black clothing a mask over his face and silver gray hair. Sasori narrowed his eyes when he saw him. The two looked up when they heard footsteps. Lee grinned at Naruto and said. Mother is almost done cooking. Kakashi tried to go in there and sneak a cookie but mother threw him out. He laughed. Naruto smiled and laughed. Kakashi cried about his cookies. Sasori was placed down on a seat and given a napkin. He silently watched the proceedings. Lee told Naruto about the new book Kakashi bought and then asked. Naruto is he one of your puppets? He gestured to the silent red head. Naruto shook his head. No he was a real human, I just updated him. Kakashi got the underlining meaning and turned to the man. He already knew the man was Sasori of the Red Sand, but he didn't say anything. 
If Naruto's experiment failed then there was one last missing nin in the world. On another note, he knew they were safe from Sasori since Naruto put his friends inside the other. The only thing he wondered was how Sasori himself was taking everything. Sasori was feeling a bit overwhelmed. Here he was sitting at a table with children, little nasty buggers, and a Konoha shinobi. Every time he thought of attacking and killed them all a sudden ache would fill his skull. He glanced at the blonde boy. He was an enigma for being so young. Who exactly was he? He mentally scowled again. How dare that brat chain him like this? He tried to move to attack again only to hide a wince as a sharp pain erupted through his skull. When the pain lessened its hold on him he sat back in his chair and decided to relax, and observe the strange going-ons in the house. In the corner of his eye a stuffed bunny twitched. He glanced at it before looking away. Kakashi caught it and smiled. Naruto nodded to Lee as the boy told him about some of the new moves he wanted to try out, tomorrow afternoon. Every few minutes he could feel his friends attack Sasori whenever the man tried to move to attack. He mentally chuckled. Oh, poor Sasori didn't realize what a position he was in now. He grinned and nodded to Lee. Few minutes later the door to the cooking area opened and a red-haired woman came walking in with a smile. Dinner's done. She cheered as she carried a large bowl of rice and fried chicken to the table. Behind her came a smaller red-haired child, carrying a bowl of cooked vegetables. Her name was Yuri. Naruto had made her month after he finished remodeling father and mother. Since he never had a sister before he decided to make one. He already had the role of brother filled in the form of Lee, and two uncle figures, in Kakashi and Kaiba. Naruto ruffled the girl's hair as she walked by. Yuri glared at him. He laughed and stuffed out his tongue. The girl huffed and placed the bowl onto the table before sitting down beside him. She glanced at Sasori before turning back to her plate. Mother put the bowls down and looked at Sasori who was glowering at Naruto. She smiled and said. All right everyone dig in Kakashi was the first to pile the food onto his plate, along with Kaiba. Naruto waited for them to finish before helping himself and Yuri. Mother and father went next. The table turned to Sasori who narrowed his eyes at them and said. I don't eat. A chuckle met his ears at this, he glanced over to the blonde. Actually, you can eat, you have to at any rate. If you don't eat your core will shrivel up and you will die. Sasori glared. How? Naruto grinned. I created a sort of artificial stomach, which will store food and digest it and turn it into energy which my friends will consume and they can turn it into chakra. You don't have to worry about any excess either, it's all used, nothing is wasted. Sasori mentally sighed at this very basic answer. He would have to get the specifics later. After that was cleared up the group went back to eating. A week after successfully completing his experiment found Naruto walking into the nearby town with his friend Lee and his newest accomplishment Sasori. Father and mother were at home with Yuri. Kaiba and Kakashi were nowhere to be found. Lee was telling him all about his newest taijutsu book Kakashi had gotten him. Naruto smiled and nodded not really interested, there's a move in the book which requires a lot of strength. I've been working harder to be able to use it, so what are we getting in town anyway Naruto? Lee finally asked. Naruto eyed him. Well we need some more food, for one. Plus we need some clothes for Sasori. Lee blinked and looked back at the glowering red head. Oh he said as he turned back to the road. They were just coming into the town. It was a small town, a fishing village really. Everywhere you looked a stall full of fresh fish was open with the owners calling out the catch of the day. Naruto liked the village he was happy with it. They went shopping for Sasori's clothes first. They got him a rain jacket and some shirts, pants, socks, a extra pair of shoes, and a pouch for his stuff. Next they went to shop for food, which wasn't much, mostly fish and vegetables. Naruto had the red head carry everything. When he tried to refuse a splitting head ache hit him causing him to wince. A smirking Naruto handed him the bags. Once he had them all in hand the headache went away as fast as came making Sasori mentally cursed the little blonde brat. They made on last stop. Sasori grumbled as he was led down a path towards the woods. He wondered what could possibly be here. They came around a bend. Sasori's eye took in the small one floor house in mild inquiry. What could possibly be here? He got his answer a few seconds later when four small children came running out with cries of. Naruto sama. Sasori blinked when the blonde kneeled down before the group and held out his arms. 
The laughing children hurled right into him knocking him down in a cloud of dust. Sasori looked up when another person came walking out of the small house. It was a young woman. She had blonde hair and green eyes. She smiled softly at the display the children were showing. Okay everyone. Let master up now come on. Sasori jolted. She was a puppet. The four young children made sounds of disappointment as they stood and stood back as the blonde stood. The boy smiled at the group. Well now looks like you sure missed me. He stated as he dusted himself off. The group cheered in agreement. Naruto blonde smirked and turned to the girl. So Kinero no Nakama, golden companion. How is everything? The girl smiled. Everything is well master, the house is in top shape, the children are looked after and are behaving. Naruto nodded and took out a bag which clinked together when moved. Here's the money for this month's expenses. Nakama took the offered money and thanked the blonde. One of the children a small girl with black hair and golden brown eyes turned her attention to the silent red head. Hey who are you? She asked as she pointed at him. Sasori inwardly groaned. The blonde smirked. That dearest Ringo is Sasori, a friend of mine who came all the way from Suna to see me. The children oohed and awed in awe. Sasori shifted awkwardly. He wasn't used to being the subject of adoration. Naruto smirked at the uncomfortable man before turning to the group. Well we better get going we have a lot to do today, I'll be back in a week. The children groaned in disappointment. Naruto just chuckled and waved goodbye. The children all waved as he left with his group. Sasori was left trailing behind grumbling once again. When they got home it was to see Kakashi and Kaiba enjoying a cup of tea in the living room. The two looked up and greeted them. Naruto nodded and went straight back to his labs. Lee went to go play with Yuri who had grabbed him immediately when he entered. Sasori was left to put everything away. When he was done he realized that he didn't know what to do. He couldn't leave because every time he tried to move to do it he felt a horrible pain in his head. He was given a room but there was nothing in it. Just a futon and a single dresser. He didn't feel up to mingling with the Konoha Nin, or the science guy. He sighed. What should he do? Perhaps he could go see what that brat is doing. He nodded to himself and left to find the little urchin. Kakashi looked up from his orange book when Sasori walked on by. The man didn't spare him or Kaiba a glance. Kakashi inwardly wondered what could be going on in his head. Well whatever it was it didn't concern him, he shrugged before going back to his book. Naruto was in the process of practicing his bloodline when he felt a presence behind him. He glanced over his shoulder to see Sasori standing behind him. He smirked at the man. So what brings you here? He asked to stop what he was doing and picking up a pink bunny off the floor. Sasori turned his attention to the bunny in mild curiosity, before turning back to the blonde. You said you wanted an ally why? The blonde grinned and gestured for him to sit. The red head took a seat on a small chair. The blonde sat on another across him. Well I guess I should tell you story first. Sasori sweat dropped. Well this story starts off with a demon a baby and a bloodline. Sasori perked up. Seven years ago a scary wary demon attacked a village. Sasori sweat dropped again. What was he? Three. This big scary demon was a very big meanie you see and did whatever he liked because he was strong. Now Sasori really sweat dropped. Why was he doing this to him? So anyway, some things happened, the big bad demon was sealed away, and the hero died in the end, leaving behind a vessel. Naruto said with a smile, but things didn't end there. No. The vessel a small newborn baby was taken into the hospital because of his bloodline. Everyone who came into contact with this poor cute baby ended up dying a cruel and unusual death. So the cute baby ended up spending the first three years of its life living in a special room, a bubble you could call it. The leader of the village decided to hire tutors and caretakers for the baby. The poor cute baby learned a lot during its time in the bubble room. He made friends with its tutors and eventually was named as a genius. Sasori blinked and nodded. The tutors wanted him to be their apprentice but alas the leader said no. Soon when the child was old enough to control its bloodline it was taken out of the bubble room and given a home to live in. So the poor orphaned baby was doomed to live alone. But not all was sad, in fact the child got regular visitors at all hours of the day even. But these visitors didn't stay long for you see they died seconds after coming into the poor baby's home. They were killed by the most deadliest thing in the universe, the blonde exclaimed. Sasori nodded getting into the story, 
juvenile as it may be. The blonde grinned sadistically. Sasori's interest grew, anticipating something of unimaginable proportions. The blonde stood and shouted, Ebola Chan, he held out a pink stuffed rabbit. Sasori anime fell, he stood back up with a scowl, he glared at the grinning blonde. Naruto patted the bunny and started murmuring to it, that's right, who's the cutest most evilest thing in the universe? A growl interrupted him. He looked up at the redhead, yes, he blinked innocently. Sasori fought the urge to smack the boy, he sighed and sat down again. Can you continue? Naruto nodded and sat down his bunny in his lap. Where was I? Oh yeah, well soon the boy became lonely, so he decided to go look for a friend. He then found a friend, a boy who was all alone in world just like him. A boy who had no family or friends, a boy who Sasori coughed. Naruto blinked and grinned. So anyway these two boys became fast friends and eventually went to school together. All was happy and dandy, Naruto cheered before frowning and saying. But all was not well in the boys' happy world. No the evil villainous council of the village were plotting most terrible things. Most terrible things indeed. Why they wanted to banish a bloodline user. A person to whom they should love and respect just like the Hyuga and the Uchiha. Saddened by their hate the boy left bringing with him the most loyal friends he could ever ask for. For the next few years this lonely child traveled from place to place trying to find a place where he and his family can settle down and live like normal people. The blonde entailed, and thus brings us to the present, where the boy lives with his creations and friends, doing experiments and living life, Sasori just glared at him. While the boy was spinning his tale of his past the boy had let some things slip into his story. The fact that he was the boy in the story, had a bloodline, and that he was the vessel for a demon. Something of which he was supposed to capture, but how was he supposed to capture him when he was fully under the boy's power? He sighed. Naruto smirked at the man. Well story time is over, do you have any questions? Sasori turned to him. What do you plan on doing with me? The grin made him cringe. Well I caught wind of a secret organization that apparently has a goal to capture the nine demons and use their power to take over the world. Sasori jolted. How did the brat know this? So I thought to myself. What better way to protect myself and complete my experiment at the same time, than to surround myself with powerful missing nins at my beck and call? When I found you in the woods I knew that you were a member of the organization. So I decided to take away a member from them and gain a powerful ally as well. The boy laughed and grinned happily at him. So what do you think? Sasori didn't know what to say. What could one say after hearing that? So he decided to ask a question instead. Where did you get this information? The blonde chuckled. A very good friend of mine. I can't tell you their name though until I can trust you so you'll have to wait for that sort of information. Sasori scowled. Just then the door burst open and the girl from the last night came in. Naru ni mom says lunch is ready. You gotta come eat now. She yelled bouncing into the room. Naruto turned to the clock. Indeed it was lunch. He frowned. That story took too long. He didn't get to practice at all. He sighed and turned back to Yuri. Okay you chan. The girl giggled and latched onto the blonde. Nay Naru ni when are you going to make me a sister? The blonde laughed. Why would you want a sister Yuri? Being the only girl means you get more attention. The girl pouted. Naruni I know that but it gets lonely being the only girl. And mom doesn't count. Naruto chuckled and started walking to the lunchroom Yuri attached to his side and Sasori following. Well perhaps if you give me a drawing of what you want her to look like I can try to make you a sister okay. The girl cheered and hugged him in glee. Yay thank you Naruni. The group made it to the kitchen table where the others were sitting and sat down. Naruto sat beside Lee with Yuri on the other side. Kakashi was reading an orange book. Beside him father was reading an identical one. Kaiba was shifting through a pile of notes and mother was setting everyone's food down. Lunch had begun. The end. The story ends here. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.